I see a hand here at the front table. Does Stephen Kinzer have a question? Or a comment? Uh, that was a great speech, and thank you for uh, inserting a little bit of academic discipline and military experience into uh, an evening that's been uh, maybe a little bit too overly tinged with passion. Um, we will have the scotch you requested waiting after you answer this question. You're sharing, you're sharing speakers, uh, secrets from the head table. I'm not going to share the other ones, though. Uh, I believe you suggested that it was American interventionism originally, which is what made America very rich and very powerful and very free. Uh, I agree with two-thirds of that. Uh, I don't think it was American intervention that made us more free. I think what, that was something that we were on a project to do for ourselves. In fact, we were well on that course uh, before we became such an interventionist nation. But I do agree with you that it was this American interventionism that made us so rich and that made us so powerful. Al Capone used the same strategy. <laughs> he also became rich and powerful by stealing from everyone around him uh, and ultimately turning everyone against him so that he fell. Don't you feel that uh, although interventionism undoubtedly is what put us in the position of being so rich and so powerful, that it also set off forces in the world that ultimately came to turn against us and that in the long run threaten not only our freedom but also our wealth and our power? I think, you know, Capone's mistake Was, was he didn't know when to quit. <laughs> now, I'm not, an, I'm not an expert in this regard, in terms of the history of the mafia, but is it, is, it, is it not the case, is it not the case that there were other um, individuals in that line of work who basically went legal, who said, we're getting out of the rackets in New York, we're gonna move to Las Vegas, and build hotels and be, participate in legal gambling and they basically converted their ill-gotten gains into permanent wealth and security. It seems to me that one could make the same comment with regard to US foreign policy. And believe me, I'm not, I'm not making a moral judgment here at all. I'm trying to make a, a practical case that that if, if Stephen and I can agree that a foreign policy of expansionism produced power and abundance, we can argue later about whether freedom came as part of that package. I wonder if we could not also agree that the problem or the challenge for the United States is to realize that We've kept playing that game long after it continued to pay. And so we need to go to a different game. Or, to put it another way, we need to abandon the foreign policy of expansionism and interventionism that did for a very long time serve us well in favor of another foreign policy, another approach to foreign policy that will enable us to consolidate and to preserve all that we gained, even if much of what we gained was ill-gotten. Yeah, you got other hands up, but I got the mic. <laughs> but first, I do want to thank uh, uh, Bumper uh, for uh, another all-star cast and uh, our speakers tonight. Uh, <clears throat> but. Following up on Stephen's question, you know, Grant, I'm, a, you know, I'm Bill Anderson. I teach economics at Frostburg State University, which is up in the mountains west of here. I bet you didn't know Maryland had mountains, but we have them. And, uh, but in a very real sense, I'm wondering if our in interventionism actually makes us poor, because after all, that, you know, let's just let's let's look at a wealthy country, uh, Switzerland. Those of us who have been to Switzerland do not think of Switzerland as a poor country. 
But one thing I do not think about Switzerland is interventionism. I do think about trade, I think of commerce uh, and the like, but hasn't this fetish with interventionism actually made us poor, not wealthier? I think, it, I think you have to talk specific cases, right? I would argue, perhaps you would disagree, that the Mexican War of 1846 and 1848 which really was a war of naked ag aggression begun by the United States of America, paid magnificently. That were it not for President Polk, had we not seized the Southwest and California, we would not enjoy the way of life we enjoy today. No, the blowback, actually, the blowback, the, the, the blowback, I'm just working on a book review, and I, the, 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 the blowback is the um, infiltration of immigrants from Mexico that are reclaiming that which they owned in the first place. There is a certain ironic justification for that. But nonetheless, I would stick to my point that uh, the Mexican War benefited the United States substantially. And so you have to talk certain interventions, not, uh, uh, not, uh, not simply interventions across the board.